Uh, my name's Rusty Humphreys, and we're just going to uh, hang out for a couple of moments. We are waiting for uh, you to check in, say hello, because we would love to hear from you here on the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. And uh, coming up in a couple of minutes, we are going to talk with the lovely and talented, a woman with a true nose for news. Her name is Laura Loomer, and uh, she's been causing uh, a lot of attention, getting a lot of attention by doing some incredible journalistic work. And uh, I know that might not be something you're used to because it certainly isn't something that the media is used to. And so Laura is actually doing the work that the uh, the media is supposed to do. And so we're going to get with her in just a couple of moments. Um, by the way, this edition of the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion is being brought to you by good friends of ours at an incredible website called The Toy Makers. Now, The Toy Makers, um, it is a, 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 well, it's a website that was created by an incredible artist. Her name is Marilyn Scott Waters. And her idea was, is why not get together and do things with kids? And she has this incredible website. It is at thetoymaker.com. That's thetoymaker.com. And when you go and check out thetoymaker.com, there are th literally thousands of different projects that you can download onto your printer and work them up with your kids. Like, for example, this incredible book, it's called The Toy Maker's Math Carnival. And you can create your own mysterious math carnival with your kids. You could print 12 toys that help you, you and your kids practice basic math skills. Skills. It really is a, a great website and something that I would really encourage you to do with your kids or grandkids. So go to thetoymaker.com, thetoymaker.com, and find out what they have for you and your family. Toymaker.com. That's uh, they brought the also the show today being brought to you by a, a Wax RX Dermond and um, our good friends over at. Oh, Zona Plus. Zona Plus. We also want to say hello to a lot of folks over at LibertyOneTV.com. Thank you for joining us. And, of course, our good friends at Right Wing News, who we love and adore dearly. Now, let's get right to it. Uh, she is uh, somebody that has been, like I said, causing it, uh, stirring it up, stirring it up in a way that we love. Laura Loomer, it's great to see you again, my friend. How are you? Doing well. How are you? I'm good. You've uh, now let's see. For folks who may not recognize you, you got in trouble for going and um, breaking up the play in the park um, right. with with Donald about the, where they were assassinating Donald Trump. Uh, you've been going after Hillary. You got in trouble, some trouble for that. You're so you you've really been out there lately, haven't you? Yeah, I've been uh, causing trouble. That's what I do best. And now I'm here in Vegas uh, reporting what the mainstream media and what local law enforcement and the FBI um, doesn't want to report, right? The truth. Okay, let's, now I went up there myself and part of the thing, the reason I went there was because I, I the conspiracy theory thing drives me crazy, Laura. I, I, I don't like the lies. I just want the truth out there. No matter what the truth is, if there was 20 shooters, I want to know, but I don't want people saying, yeah, there was four shooters when it's not true. I, I'm guessing you're the same way. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. And everything I've been reporting on is is fact based, right? And what I've been reporting on are documents that have been obtained from inside the hotel through my sources, uh, from either valet logs or um, room service receipts that show that uh, the shooter was checked into the Mandalay prior to the date of the 28th, which is what FBI and law enforcement have been telling the media and the American public for over a week now. Okay, why why does that date matter if he got there a day early, two days late? Why does that matter, you think? Well, because it could, uh, you know, there could be other witness testimonies for people who saw him um, inside the hotel. It really has a lot to do with the timeline and, um, you know, over the course of the few days, like whether people were bringing weapons in, whether he had help, like other people could have come inside the hotel during those dates and used the room to stockpile weapons because, as we know, a lot of weapons were found. Um, and they said that the room service, um, the uh, Do Not Disturb sign was on the door for um, for three days. So if you look at the time between the 25th and the 28th, well, was it the three days? I mean, the 25th and the 28th that the room service sign was on. Is that why he didn't want people in? Because he was planning and bringing in all of these weapons during those three days. It has a lot to do with, you know, the factual information of the case. And, um, you know, it's it's important. I mean, it's, it's misinformation. If you're telling right. the public that someone 
checked in to plan a mass murder terrorist attack um, on the wrong date. I mean, you're seriously hindering the investigation by preventing people who may have knowledge or other um, other tips to come forward. Okay. You're basically, trying to, you're basically telling them that what they saw didn't happen. Okay. Are you seeing, is, is your reporting being caught up? Because I know they've kind of changed some things with the police, right? The police report has changed or the FBI report. Well, yeah, so I've been calling out the FBI and local law enforcement for misleading and lying to the American people all week. And I decided to attend the press conference yesterday with a friend of mine who's another independent journalist, Mike Tokes. You can follow him on Twitter at Mike Tokes. And, um, Is he there too? Yeah, he's here right now. He's holding the camera for oh, me. Oh, okay. Um, he's doing <laughs> great. And um, yeah, you can follow him as well. And we've been doing this together um, as a team. And uh, we went to the press conference yesterday. He periscoped it live from his account. And when I asked the sheriff, I said, there are receipts and documents that show or prove that that the shooter checked in prior to the FBI given timeline date of the 28th, that he checked in on the 25th. Has your timeline changed? And they had not publicly addressed this or mentioned a possible date of the 25th, right? And then at the end, um, he ended up admitting yes. And for those of you who have, who have not watched the press conference, he was so angry by what I asked him. He tried to shout over me. Really? And down. He he became, he looked like he was going to stroke out. I was receiving <laughs> text messages and messages from people who were like, oh my God, I can't believe you went to the press conference and asked him. He was so scared of your question. Why do you think that is? I, I, I don't understand just because you made a mistake and didn't want people to. No, it's because they've been, they, knew, they know this information. If I was able to obtain this as an independent investigative journalist on a budget with an iPhone, then they, the FBI, with a ton of intelligence resources and, and um, you know, just resources in general, should have been able to locate the state. And they did. They knew that it was the 25th, but they intentionally either kept it from the public or they're lying about the date. And I don't know if that has to do with their investigation or a cover-up, which is starting to look like a large-scale cover-up of the shooting, in my opinion. Um, okay, okay, let's stop I, right there. Why, why do you think there's a large-scale cover-up? I mean, what do you think they're trying to hide? Because they've been constantly, from the very beginning, trying to convince the public that something that did not happen occurred, right? So with the dates and... Um, <clears throat> They're, they're trying to say that this guy was never flagged on their system. That's not possible. If you wire $100,000 worth of money, regardless whether it be you know, a wire transfer to yourself or an international transa transaction, domestic transaction, the FBI is going to flag your account. You can't make a transaction over $10,000 in this country without your banking information receiving a flag by the FBI. Right. You, usually, you usually get contacted by your bank or the local FBI office and they ask you what the large uh, well, transfer would I mean, be. I've transferred $10,000 and they never called me. Well, there, there are flags. There okay. Are, I mean, they did, probably did without me knowing. You can talk to financial analysts. You can talk to bankers. And, um, you know, I... It's common knowledge that if you're making large bank transfers, your fl your account gets flagged. Your bank at least gets a notification. I mean, that's just how I roll, but that's me. I'm just crazy that way. Uh, Laura, right. Laura, Laura, Laura Loomer is here. So, okay, do you think there's more than one shooter? I mean, do you have a theory yeah, on what's I, going I, on here? I believe that there are more than one shooters. I've been talking to people here in, Ve in Vegas, people who were at the event. There are people who re wish to remain anonymous, who were in attendance, whose family members were shot, who have reached out to me and said that they saw somebody shooting on the ground, okay? Hmm. Um, why would there be someone shooting on the ground? Why hasn't why haven't the autopsy results from uh, the body's been released, which would provide us with evidence of the trajectory of the bullets, right? You can tell whether somebody was shot up close or from far away when you do an autopsy because you can measure the trajectory of the bullets and look at the impact and how it, how it, um, you know, impacted the body upon upon hitting it. So this is information that they're keeping from the public that would really reveal whether or not there were two shooters. But I believe that this this was an ISIS attack. Um, I believe that um, it wasn't just ISIS. It was probably ISIS and other other. Um, other terrorist organizations or gang related organizations combined as well. And that there were multiple shooters, some on the ground okay. and one from the window. What do you, th okay. Or maybe two from the window. Who knows? Okay. What? Now, um, do you think this, so you think it's ISIS, not like Antifa because one of my concerns is, and I could see why the government would want to silence this. 
if we found out that it really was a bunch of left wingers shooting at a bunch of who who they thought were Republicans just because they've been told that Nazis are okay to kill and everybody that voted for Trump was a Nazi. You know, we're talking Civil War crap here. You know, we're talking serious, serious stuff. And I'd want to keep that a little quiet, too, if I was in control. Yeah, people want to keep it quiet. But look, ISIS took responsibility for the attack almost immediately. Right. ISIS doesn't have a history of claiming responsibility for things that they don't do. There have been attacks carried out by Muslims that they don't take responsibility for because they're very specific as to the attacks they take responsibility for. And I honestly think that it's appalling that we live in a country right now where you can't even trust. You don't even know whether to trust the word of ISIS or the FBI. Right. We should be able to trust the FBI. And right now, millions of Americans and people around the world are having this discussion. Do we believe ISIS or do we believe the FBI? And right now, I'm willing to come out on the record and say, I'm willing to trust ISIS more than our own FBI in this country um, in terms of like, you know, the motive and the responsibility or the explanation for this attack. Well, the only thing I can tell you, and I don't know if it's ISIS or not, I will tell you that when I was in. Israel and I've right. I've interviewed a number of terrorists and we keep going oh they don't really mean it they 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 just saying stuff they they don't really mean it no they mean it they come out and they say listen uh, this guy here his name's Muhammad and on Thursday at noon uh, he's going to become a martyr it's like right Ma- Muhammad this isn't news right I mean in De- in December of 2016 the FBI and Department of Homeland Security issued a joint report warning Las Vegas specifically of ISIS and other quote-unquote lone wolf, even though there's no such thing as lone wolf terrorism, um, and attacks on venues like concert halls and and other uh, public events in Vegas, right? So they knew that an attack on Vegas was going to happen, so they must have received some type of intel. And not only that, but a few months ago, ISIS released a video, a propaganda video, in which they targeted Las Vegas. They said in their video, by showing pictures and video of Las Vegas, that they were going to attack Las Vegas. And then a week before a week before this even happened, you have the leader of ISIS, right? Uh, you have the leader of ISIS making a video report promising for there to be more attacks on the U.S. and the Western world. And then we saw that came true because other places like Canada and uh, the U.K. were attacked and there were uh, attacks prevented in France. And then the same week, we get attacked, right? right? I don't think that's a coincidence. All right, that's her. She name. Her name is Laura Loomer. Will you do me a favor, folks? First of all, what's so important, and Laura knows this as as well as anybody, and that is these social media companies. As much as we love using them, they don't love us conservatives that much. And the only way that our voice, that Laura's reporting, is going to get heard, is if you like and share this video right now. People need to see this video. You need to interact. Do you agree with Laura? Do you think she's crazy? Do you think she's on to something? Your interaction makes all the difference in the world. Does it not, Laura? Am I right? Yeah, and there's, you're probably right about both of, both of those things. I'm probably a little crazy and on to something at the same time. <laughs> but hey, right? You got to be a little bit crazy to come out here in the middle of an investigation and confront FBI agents. I confronted the FBI as they were walking up the escalator at Mandalay Bay the other day with Mike. And they said no comment. And I took pictures of their license plates and their window decals. And they're from the California Bureau. Why is the California Bureau of the FBI investigating a shooting that took place here? Why has the investigation been taken over by FBI and DHS? Is there a national security threat? Is there a terrorism threat? Usually that's what happens when Department of Homeland Security takes over these types of investigations. I mean, when was the last time you ever saw a shooting get taken over by DHS? Okay. Um, I, Raymond has written this. Rusty has not done his homework at all. Didn't even watch Laura at the press conference before having her on. I don't need to watch her in press conference. I call, I, I call her on the cell phone. I'd much rather talk to her. Why no questions were asked to the police about um, have they interviewed the woman who had went around telling others that they were all going to die that night? Um, have you been following that story, Laura? Yeah, I tweeted about that a few few days ago last week and uh, one of my sources told me that there was a woman in custody who they uh, who they said did did say that to individuals there but they've been rather quiet about it ever since I haven't heard any updates but what's even more concerning is this security guard that everyone labeled as a hero who supposedly called during the attack well the press conference yesterday besides my bombshell question that led to the revelation of the timeline change was another another bit of information from somebody else in which 
Jesus Campos, the hero security guard, um, was shot six minutes prior to the shooting even taking place. So there was a window of six to seven minutes that MGM security and Jesus Campos could have prevented or taken out Stephen Paddock. Uh, and potentially all these people could be alive today, but that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So what happened? Why did it take them six minutes to go into the room and stop the shooting? It took longer than that, of course, but why did it take six minutes for them to, uh, um, between like the time of the shooting and, and like the security guard being shot? Right. Like, and, and why play him up as a big hero when he, he, I mean, he wasn't right. Is that what? But not a hero because if he was shot beforehand, then he wasn't shot trying to prevent the shooting. It was portrayed to us that he went up there and tried to stop the shooting and that that's why everyone called him a hero. But mm-hmm. right now he's starting to almost appear as a suspect, not a hero. And so why did the LVMPD and the American public portray this guy who nobody knows anything about as a hero when it turns out he didn't even do anything to try and stop the shooting? All right, Laura Loomer is here on the Rusty Average Rebellion. And I, I broke a story exclusively about... 30 minutes ago before coming on to your show, I've obtained pictures of the official MGM employee database and Jesus Campos has been scrubbed from the system. He's not even listed as an official MGM security employee for Mandalay anymore. That's on my Twitter. It was exclusively released with gotnews.com. And this is a shocking revelation because if this guy is supposedly a hero, he would all he would be the employee of the decade. Right, right. Why, right. Why, they, why have they scrubbed their system of all employment records of this uh, very suspicious Hispanic security guard? All right, let's talk about something else you've reported on about one of the managers of uh, MGM or the Mandalay Bay. Again, uh, MGM owns the Mandalay Bay and, and a bunch of other properties. Right. Um, giving money to Antifa groups or, and, and other uh, odd donations. Right. Yeah, so this is a, this is the CEO, Jim Moran, whose wife, Heather Moran, worked in the Obama administration in 2016. Uh, he's a big Hillary supporter, a big leftist, big-time donor. Whole, I'm being told by hotel security that he's even held Democratic fundraisers inside some of these resorts before. Um, and he sent out a memo to his employees and told them that he would match all donations given to groups like SBLC, which is a domestic terrorist organization. Uh Council on American Islamic Relations, uh, more known as CARE, right? CARE has been listed by the United Arab Emirates as a terrorist organization, okay? You have a Muslim-majority nation calling an organization that Democrats rally around in the country a terrorist organization, okay? Mm -hmm. So why, why is the CEO of MGM International Resorts donating shareholder company money to Islamic terrorists? And radical left wing people tied to George Soros. Uh, it's it's and, and I'm guessing we have not gotten any response to that question yet. Correct? No, I mean they're they're being completely silent. They've they've uh, they've assigned a PR company out of New York, from what I've been told, to address their concerns and questions from the public. And you know they're not they're not giving anybody answers. But I'm telling you, it's starting to look like they're going to have major lawsuits on their hands because mm-hmm. if this really is true that that the security guard was shot on the 32nd floor. Uh, six minutes prior to when the shooting even began, then that means that they could have done something to prevent it. Well, one of the, I mean, you know, I'm not that surprised that they're donating to left-wing causes. I remember Sharon Angle coming out and actually uh, creating a lawsuit um, against uh, the casinos, the Culinary Union, which is the biggest union in Nevada, uh, talking about how they basically forced employees to go and vote for Harry Reid and that there was a lot of stinky things that was going on there. Yeah, and I have sources from inside the same exact union you're talking about coming to me saying that during the election, the CEO through the union offered MGM employees 10 weeks of paid leave uh, so that they could go campaign for Hillary Clinton. I mean, I think I think that's extremely inappropriate. You're giving people 10 weeks paid leave, uh, basically employment, um, company money to go volunteer for a presidential candidate as far as i'm concerned that's like the equivalent of an fec donation and that should have been lost i mean that they could potentially be committing campaign finance fraud by by providing that to their employees all right right. there's some uh, comments people are putting in there um gail writes i saw a video of a man on the ground shooting into the crowd um i haven't seen that video have you 
I mean, I know a shooting they're talking about. It really does appear like somebody is shooting into the crowd. But um, some people have said, oh, no, that's a flashlight. And then it just looks really bright. But it does appear that somebody was on the ground shooting a rifle. I mean, it is a very strange video. Hmm. And I've spoken to people who were working that night and people who were there and, and family members of people who died. And they have told me that they saw people shooting on the ground. Hmm. And... I no. just I just saw somebody just put something up here and I don't mean to interrupt you, but this one this scares me and I hope it's not true. I don't like this kind of stuff, but are you worried about this? Eric writes, I'm pretty sure we are going to read about Laura's tragic accident here soon. I know, like a lot of people are really nervous for me, but I I can promise you I'm being safe and I do have somebody with me investigating, so I'm not by myself. And um I'm taking precautions. But look, I mean I think that that would be a huge red flag, right? An investigative journalist on the ground investigating the corruption. If I end up being suicided or, you know, with a bullet in between my head, just know that I'm very excited to be here in Las Vegas investigating and I am not suicidal. Okay, I was going to ask, so you're not suicidal, you're not having a bad time, you're not looking to take yourself out, you're not sick, nothing like that. Okay. All right, let's see here. Uh, Let's see. Carol says it all sounds stinky to me. Christopher thinks uh, Laura's right. The FBI is covering their tracks. Pamela they are. Even mm-hmm. Lou Dobbs from Fox News. Lou Dobbs sent out a tweet last night and was like, why is the FBI and the LVMPD lying? It's like, hey, I've been reporting this for over a week now, and people in the mainstream media have been ignoring me. I, I told you over a week ago that they're lying. I reported the original date of the check-in over a week ago. Why is it that people are you know, suddenly expressing selective outrage when really they should have been reporting on these bombshells um over a week ago yeah let's see here uh pamela says i like laura but i think it's antifa however i'm sure isis is trying to partner with antifa we already know isis is partnering with antifa there's antifa people who travel overseas to the islamic state to receive training so that they can um you know fight against their political opponents they they dress like antifa they cover their faces like Antifa. They carry black flags with their with their ideology and their their uh, their brand on their flag, just like ISIS does, right? I mean, there it's not a surprise that radical left wing organizations and individuals in this country have been merging themselves and aligning themselves with Islam for the past few years, right? But but does I mean does that make sense? I mean, I don't know why the left would would try to get with Islam. Because they're the exact uh, antithesis of each other. Because it's the same. They have the same mission. They have the same mission. It's either you comply and you accept their ideology or you submit. And if you don't submit, we're going to kill you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's exactly the same mindset that the left has in this country right now. You either agree with us or we do everything in our power to attack you physically, financially, emotionally. Um, You know, you either submit. You either buy into our bullshit propaganda or we get we get rid of you we take care of you mm-hmm. and we see that in the way antifa aggressively attacks uh trump supporters simply for just expressing their first amendment right all right if, if, if but, I, I i want to remind everybody here if you're just tuning in this is laura loomer and it's so very important that her reporting gets out there so if you would please it's so very important the thumbs up the hearts your comments and most importantly, your shares right now. Right. People need to hear the truth and see the truth. And again, we're not telling you what to, I mean, Laura, you're not saying you're stupid if you don't agree with me. You're doing what Fox News used to say. We report, you decide. True? Yeah, I mean, you decide. I'm reporting. I'm giving you the facts. So if you don't want to agree with me, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it just seems like you would not want to tune in to the factual statements and photographic evidence that I've obtained. I mean, you kind of have to accept it as the truth because it is the truth, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the only people who aren't going to accept my reporting are people who are experiencing extreme cognitive dissonance right now and are trying to turn this into an issue of gun control, right? I mean, it's the perfect event to try and attack guns in the Second Amendment right, but as more evidence comes out, it's really looking like Islamic terrorism. It's really starting to look like more than just an issue of gun control, right? Because a lot of these guns were obtained legally and background checks were conducted. And it's, you know, guns guns don't kill, kill people, people kill people. And if there's more evidence that comes out suggesting there's a, you know, second or multiple shooters or uh, accomplices, 
then, you know, gun owners and gun vendors all across the country are going to be vindicated. Yeah. All right. Let's see some more of the comments here. Kathy says, Laura's on to something. She is just voicing what we are thinking. Iris, right. Iris says, right on. Kathy says, I believe she is sure of what she's talking about. At least she's told me more than what I've heard on the news. Keep up the good work, Laura. Wes says, why no, ho- why no video from the hotel? Why no video from Mandalay Bay? Is right. that true? No, exactly. Yeah, so there's no video that's been released. And as soon as I arrived at, um, you know, in Las Vegas, I went over to Mandalay Bay with Mike Tokes, and we started taking pictures immediately of all the cameras we could see um, surrounding the windows where the shooting supposedly took place. Place, right if you look at the pictures i posted on my twitter account a couple days ago you'll see the two windows there are nine windows separated on the far side above the second window there are at least two security cameras that are visible mind you these are only visible cameras 360 degree lenses there's a lot of surveillance in las vegas that is not shown or um visible to the eye, right? They have a lot of secret cameras or devices that are recording devices that you can't tell are recording devices. And then on the other side, overlooking the other window, there's like three to five different security cameras that are pointing on an angle above and onto the side of the window that Stephen Paddock uh, conducted the shooting out of. Um, And if they're 360 degree lenses, then they should have captured the shooting Mm -hmm, and if there's other if there's other cameras directly facing the windows from other hotels they would be able to tell how many shooters were shooting out of that room because at nighttime since they were using high-powered automatic rifles you would be able to see the muzzle flash right okay tell how many people were shooting and and speaking of the muzzle flash uh, there was the report of somebody shooting off the fourth floor. Now, when I was there, I didn't see any broken windows. They could have fixed it, but it also didn't look like that was a very good shot uh, angle. What, what is your take on that one? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not really buying the theory that somebody shot on the fourth floor. I think that from what I'm being told, there was like a strobe light that kept going off and it appeared to look as if somebody was shooting. I do <laughs> believe there are, there are shooters on the ground. Mm-hmm, okay. I mean, on the wounds that people sustained, Um, and the amount of people who were killed, especially since it was done through spraying from an angle above. I mean, it looks as if somebody was on the ground shooting. Well, I I had a a friend who I've known from elementary school. He and his girlfriend were there. Um, he was, you know, he was on the show talking about it. Uh, he did not feel like there was anybody on the ground, but it was very, it was so confusing. He didn't know. All he said was you'd hear the the shots and then they they figured out that there was like a space of about nine to ten seconds and then they'd run to the next place and then they'd start shooting again. Uh, so and he was a nurse. A lot of people were asking, is it possible that it was fake and that the people weren't really hurt? And that really upset him because uh, he thought that was just incredibly s- stupid. What do you say to that? What's your question? My what? What is your thought of, of of what a guy like that on the ground would have to say? Again, I, I a guy I've known. Um, I mean, look, a lot of people when they when they experience a shooting and they see people dying around them, they go into shock, and it's really hard to recollect the events. And that's why there's so much information going around right now, is because a lot of people when they're under pressure and they're fighting for their lives and they think they're about to die they don't necessarily have all the information or the facts and it gets a little blurry, right? He, and and he um, absolutely was still in shock. He was still freaking right. out and and was like, I don't even know why I'm alive. You know, I mean, he was right. having a hard time with it. Uh, a couple, Laura Loomer here, a couple more things for people saying. Uh, Lyndon thinks that Paddock was dead before the shooting ever started. I mean, look, a lot of people are thinking of the same thing and they're looking into it. I'm not going to say whether that's true or not, because obviously I haven't, you know, I haven't discovered that through my investigation yet. But trust, there are a lot of different theories and possibilities that I am looking at and Mm. I'm trying to explore and investigate while I'm here on the ground in Las Vegas. But let's let's see. It does make you wonder. Okay. uh, Raymond says we need more Americans like Laura who seek the truth and demand the truth. Uh, Gordon says we're having a shooting here in Texas today, just about an hour ago. Uh, been two in Texas this week. I- I've not heard about this new one. Have you? I have not. No. Okay. Well, we'll look into that. Did- oh, I did, did hear about. I think it was Texas Tech, or maybe a university shooting, or. Um, I 
We, um, Maybe. We'll, I thought I saw something about somebody picking up a, a gun and killing a police officer on a campus, but oh boy. I don't know. It's, I've really just been really like nose deep. Yeah, it, in. it's very hard. People don't get it. When you're on the ground and you're trying to look at stuff, it's hard to see anything else, isn't it? Any other yeah, stories? I really have been focusing mostly today. My attention has been totally dedicated to my investigation into the shooting as well as the um, the Project Veritas video that came out today, right? I used to work with Project Veritas, and for those of you who aren't aware, they just ex- released an explosive video regarding the New York Times and their fake news reporting. And, um, you know, there's connections with one of their reporters being a member of Antifa and telling a lot of lies and um, just kind of exposing how they target Donald Trump. So um, I've those are the two things that have really consumed all of my energy today. Yeah, basically the story here is that uh, we have a reporter here. You Thank you for bringing that up. American Pravda, the New York Times is slanting the news and a bizarre Comey connection. Uh, what is the, the Comey connection? Well, there was a New York Times reporter who uh, was meeting with a female Project Veritas reporter. And I don't know if he was trying to impress her to get laid or whether he was telling the truth or if he's lying. But he was like, oh, yeah, um, you know, I'm in charge of a lot of these things, like the reporting about this investigation over at the New York Times. And I should have recused myself because Comey's my godfather. And he, you know, it's like he was trying to impress her by saying that he's reporting all this information about um, Comey and, you know, the investigation tied to Trump and uh, Russia and Hillary Clinton. And then meanwhile, like, he's also in control of gatekeeping the story. And Mm -hmm. so that's a huge scandal, if true, because it shows that the New York Times is being biased in their reporting. It it goes against their entire um, employee ethics line, which says that you're not supposed to report on people who are either family members or closely related to you. But like you said, so, he could have just trying to be cool and pick up the chick. I mean, you're a yeah, good-looking woman. Say, that happens. I mean, why would he lie like that? It just it just gets to the... like a. Oh, wait, wait, the, wait a second, Laura Loomer. You've never had a guy lie to you trying to ask you no, out? No, look, I worked for Project Veritas, and there were plenty of guys who said really weird things to me that didn't seem right just so they could talk to me, but it made for great stories and investigations because they were not incriminating themselves as they were saying what they were saying. Was it true? I don't know. But a lot of guys come up with things that they think you're going to impress women when really it's just kind of gross. Like, sorry, but for me, I'm not attracted to men who say, oh, I used to be a member of Antifa, right? <laughs> or one of my pre- one of the previous investigations I worked on, a guy told me, yeah, I got a pedophile off. I got a child molester off uh, through the teachers union. And now he's a free man. As if that was supposed to like excite me or something. So wow. there's a lot of sick, there's a lot of sick people out there, and whether they what they say is true or not, it just goes uh, along with this like psychosis that members of the left experience in mass, where they just find the need to constantly lie, wow. right? The wow. constant lies yeah, they want, and that's just evident through this New York Times um, employee. Okay, um, let's see here. I, I know you're. I, I appreciate you staying long here, Laura, and I hope it's not. I hope it's not messing up your night. Just a few more minutes, and I'll let you go if that's okay. Okay. Uh, um, let's see. Um, Glenda says, "Who do they have in custody?" Sheriff kept saying they had someone in custody. Do you know that story? She dropped something. I'm walking over to the light right now, just so you guys can see me better. But because um, it is getting kind of dark out here. But okay. um, hopefully that's better. Right there. Perfect. Who do they have in custody? Uh, what are you referring to? It just says, do they have someone in, have? Uh, who do they have in custody? Sheriff kept saying they had someone in custody. I'm not sure about that one. I would need more. I would need more information, mm-hmm. like the specifics as to what you're talking about, to really comment on this. But um, really, the information that people should be focused on right now are the dates, the discrepancies in the dates, and the fact that the FBI and the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department lied to the American people about the dates. And even during the press conference after the sheriff. Uh, visibly became angered with what I said, he continued to lie. He said, we're looking at, um, you know, a possible date of the 25th, but I don't believe that he was in the room between the 25th and the 28th. Hmm. That's a lie. I obtained receipts, room service receipts that prove that Paddock was inside the room on the 27th. He placed an order for two guests. Okay. Hmm. And this is all on my Twitter. This is all published. Infowars picked it up. Gateway Pundit. The mainstream media has been totally silent about this, but look, they're engaging in a cover-up or at least a misinformation campaign. 
And and, if, and when I was there on Tuesday, it was amazing how lazy the media was. They are way down there right. by the Tropicana, and it looks like you walked right up just like I did to Mandalay Bay, and there's not one media guy there. Right. There weren't a lot of media people there. I was there uh, with Mike, and we took it upon ourselves to question the FBI agents because... Like I said, the media is almost complicit in this cover-up. I mean, even after I raised the question of the 25th and the the sheriff at the end had to admit that, yes, the 25th is the check-in date, none of the media thought, oh, my God, this means that they intentionally gave us the wrong information. I mean, you would think that they would be smart enough, since they're getting bankrolled by, like, million-dollar budgets, to ask the simple question, why did you tell us the 28th if you knew it was the 25th? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very strange. And then, and then now we get some some very strange stuff. Like Kathy, and, and no offense, Kathy, but just uh, I heard that Paddock's airplane had been owned by the Obama administration. Had I don't heard? know. There's a lot of information flying around. Yeah. His, his his airplane is now registered to a company called Volant LLC, and there were some there was some information going around about another company called Volant Associates, which provides, um, you know contracts to the defense department supposedly but i don't know i mean i'm not i'm not focused on the on the hypothetical situations or what others are calling conspiratorial angles i'm really focused on the hard data that's inside the hotel system that proves that they're lying right. like the receipts like the check-in dates like the security cam footage like testimony from hotel employees right, right? how about that there was a, a picture initially of a pad with a 13 on his neck and everybody's saying oh he's a member of ms-13 yeah, I mean, hey, I, I am also kind of uh, wondering whether or not he is a member of MS-13, right? Um, I mean, it's, I it's mean that's pretty, I mean, he's pretty old to be part of a gang like that. Well, isn't he? you know, if or if he at some point in his life had some type of connection with MS-13, because why would he have a 13 tattooed on his neck? And then as he, uh, in, in his picture that they showed um, from the crime scene, he didn't have a 13 on his neck. So, look, things can easily be photoshopped. Who knows? Yeah. But it does kind of raise the suspicion, like, did he get a tattoo? Was it removed? If it was removed, why was it removed? Like, what does this guy do? Right. Right. Paul wants to know, have you been able to interview any of the other security staff at the Mandalay? Have you talked to any people? I I have security staff who are my sources, but I'm not going to disclose who they are because right now I'm, you know, speaking with them confidentially. But um, I'm not going to be disclosing my sources and I'm not really going on the record with anybody mm -hmm. at the moment because... Um, you know, the FBI, from what I'm being told, is issuing their secret gag orders on employees inside the Mandalay to control the flow of information. Well, so, and, and um, I saw, I mean, it was starting to happen, I mean, right right away on Tuesday when I was there, the employees, you could tell they were shaken. I, I was at the Tropicana, and it was obvious they were shaken. And the other thing that was weird to me, if you walked, I don't know if you've walked around the casinos yet, I was at the MGM. Yeah, I did. And they're beer ponging it up and yelling and hooting and hollering, and it's like, guys... Less than 24 hours ago, 500 people were shot less than a mile away. Right. I, that, that I'm having a hard time with. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't understand how the casino is even operating. I mean, there it was very slow. I've been walking around, but there are people who are just walking around as if nothing happened. And I find it to be very odd because you can walk across the street and there are still people crying and bawling their eyes out at the vigils. So it's disturbing. It really is disturbing to see how you know, quickly people just either move on or just kind of pretend like something doesn't exist. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. I will never stay in the Mandalay Bay. I mean, that is very creepy. I can't sleep at night knowing that I'd be staying in the same hotel as, as uh, you know. That guy, yeah. A, a terrorist. Well, um, yeah, Brian says, let's face it, people, Vegas is camera city. There is no way in hell they did not get some footage unless the narrative was completely controlled. Right. Smells like agenda to me. Um, Raymond says, uh, we talk about us, said it was a strobe light. No glass was broken on the fourth floor. That's true. And right across from that thing, that's where the, uh, um, Luxor is. And that is strobe right. lights there. So let's be, I mean, we want the honesty here. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, and then Deb thinks Paddock was a patsy. I'm investigating. I mean, look, I'm not going to say yes or no. I'm my job as an investigative journalist is to present the facts, right? right. That's right. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm investigating and I'm presenting the facts. Okay. Is there anything I know that, uh, I don't know, you know, you, that you're now kind of, you're, you're independent. You're on your own. You're yes. doing your own thing. Um, I'm guessing there's not uh, big paychecks yet. Can people no. help you in Nobody, some way? 
nobody is paying me to do this. I simply rely on crowdfunding donations from the American public and people who want to seek the truth. Um, as many of you know, I resigned from my job at Rebel Media a couple weeks ago, and um, I'm independent now. So um, if you would like to support my work, you can do so at paypal.me slash Laura Loomer. And then if you're going to support me, I'd also you know, encourage you to support um, my colleague and friend, Mike Pokes, who's here on the ground investigating with me as well, another independent journalist without a mainstream media paycheck. Right. His PayPal is paypal.me slash Mike Pokes. Okay. You dropped out on his name one more time. Um, PayPal.me slash Mike Tokes. And you can follow me on Twitter at Laura Loomer. And you can follow Mike on Twitter at Mike Tokes. We're here on the ground in Las Vegas together. And he's been a really great asset and a lot of help. And um, he's been assisting me with the investigation. So, Are you having any fun? It is Vegas. I mean, I just I just arrived two days ago, and really, I've just been focused since the moment I arrived to really just, you know, speak with sources and gather intel and break more stories. So, you know, I, I'm here really to expose the truth. And mm. I would feel guilty if I took a moment out. Really, no, to go go see a show. Go see Piff the but Magic Dragon. Go have fun. He's good. It's it's dangerous. It's dangerous. I mean, honestly, it kind of makes you scared because I was walking around the other night, and there was a sign. And someone wrote in Sharpie on this really big cement block in, in the Las Vegas Strip, ISIS is here. I mean, I can send you the picture. I tweeted it out. It's like really eerie. Yeah, but any I idiot know. could write that, right? But I just want people to know that they need to be vigilant and they need to be aware because ISIS is present in all 50 states in this country and they are planning attacks regardless of whether or not the government wants to let you know. Okay. And they are targeting sporting events. They're targeting music venues. They're targeting concert halls. They're targeting... Um, you know, synagogues and churches. And so please be vigilant, right? Mm. Whenever you go to a big event, you should really be aware of the fact that terrorists could also be there. Okay, last one. Um, have you, this is um, from Jimmy, any proof of other shootings at other hotels? I'm looking into that as well. I've been meeting with people who said they were working at other hotels while they uh, while, while the shooting took place, but um, I don't have any hard proof at the moment. I mean, there's a lot of evidence that suggests that there was, but like I said, I'm here to report the facts and the truth, and okay. I'm not going to say something is something unless I really have definitive All right. proof. All right, Mike Tand, uh, I could tell his arm is starting to get uh, tired because he's getting shaky. So yeah. uh, turn the camera on so we can see him. We want to give him okay. a little... Hey, he's Mike. There we go. Let's give him... Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey. Good hey, to see you. Going? All right, give us your, you give us both of your guys' uh, um, uh, PayPal accounts one more time so we can try to get some people to help you out. Okay, my PayPal is um, paypal.me slash Laura Loomer. Um, and then my Twitter account is at Laura Loomer. And my PayPal is paypal.me slash M-I-K-E-T-O-K-E-S. My Twitter is the same, M-I-K-E-T-O-K-E-S. Mike Tokes. Okay, yes. Mike Tokes. Laura right. Loomer. You yep. guys are rocking it. Keep it up. Thank you so much for your hard work, and I hope you'll please come on the show more often. Yeah, it sounds great. All right, Laura, Mike, thanks, guys, for being here on the Rust Hanvers Rebellion. I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for Take having care. us. Bye-bye. All right, those are good guys. And you know what? I really would uh, like to uh, ask you to please, if you would, please uh, donate some money to them. These are not rich kids. You know, I've known Laura for a while, and she's just, an average, you know, young lady in her 20s trying to make a living and she's working her tail off and, you know, she has a right to eat like everybody else. So I know I'm going to donate some money to him tonight. I hope you will too. And uh, what is your what is your thoughts about um, what they had to say today? Hang up on them so they can go away. I'd like to know your thoughts. I'd like to know what you think about... Uh, what Laura had to say. I mean, he's kind of scoop up here and got so many comments today. Thank you very much, by the way. And um, your comments are very important. And your shares, your likes, let people know that you're here and why. It's so very, very important. It's so very, very important that we get the word out. Again, I, I, I don't know what Laura's saying is... Uh, is right or not. But you know what? I'd sure as heck rather have the investigation 
I'd sure like to look into it and and make sure that all bases are covered. And, and it seems that they are not. I mean, the one irrefutable fact is that Laura found that the mass murderer was checked in the hotel days before the cops said he was there. Cody says, seems like the more we find out, the less we know about the entire situation. Mary says, I came in late, so I didn't hear much of it. Don't worry. As soon as this is over, uh, it will. you can rewatch the whole video every night you can. We're here at 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West every night here, and unless i got something else going on on the Rusty Average Rebellion. You can also listen to the podcast at iTunes and Stitcher and iHeartRadio and Google Play and most places where they have uh, podcasts, you can find it. Catherine thinks the guy was uh, is a patsy. Raymond says, honestly, I think there's zero doubt in my mind it's a cover-up. Deb says, I heard two guns right off the bat. I said it was a setup from the get-go. Misty says, it's mind-blowing. Um, you know, the one thing I know is that in that area, it is very, you know, I do know about sound, and sound bounces a lot, especially off things like glass. And the way that that building is shaped is very odd. Uh, Cody says, I need to do my podcast on Spotify. Um, Okay, I'll look into it. By the way, one thing I'd like you to look into is uh, WaxRx. We have some fantastic sponsors. We cannot do this show without sponsors. This is how I feed my family. And it is by you supporting the wonderful sponsors that we have on the show. Now, let me tell you about WaxRx. Because, boy, did I need this a couple of nights ago. I do get wax in my ears a couple of times a year to the point where I can't hear and I get dizzy. I got to go to the doctor. And it's just, it's awful. And it's embarrassing. You got wax in your ears. I mean, how gross. And it was in the middle of the night. And it was just so uncomfortable. And I'm thinking, I got to get up and go to the doctor. I don't want to go to the ER, but I have to. Wait a second. I got wax RX. And I pulled out the box, and I've got a couple of them. I want to keep the uh, full one here so I don't spill it. But it's got all the things that you need. And so now you can clean your ears at home with a system just like doctors use. There's three complete uses here, and it's good for ages 12 and up. It's very simple. It just it just works. Go to WaxRx.com. That's WaxRx.com. And make sure you use my name, Rusty, in checkout, okay? It'll make a big difference We do that. Also, another thing that I've been using that does make a huge difference. I had to go to the doctor, and the doctor's going, you know what? Um, you're getting to that age, bud. And oh, Mary says, well, if you get rid of the wax, you hear even better. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Uh, Roger, it's gross, Rusty. Now, wax is gross. We want to get rid of it. But one of the things the doctor was telling me uh, not that long ago was that I'm tittering on high blood pressure. And that scared me. And I didn't want to take the medicine. And so I've been talking about hearing about this great product called the Zona Plus. And the Zona Plus is a handheld device. It's a smart device. And basically, you just follow the instructions on the Zona Plus. It just tells you what to do. And as you squeeze, it can help you lower your blood pressure naturally. 70 million Americans have high blood pressure. 70 million. And by the way, women are at an even higher risk. I didn't know that. So it's safe. It's easy to use. It's clinically proven guided therapy to help you lower your blood pressure. And it takes about 12 minutes a day, five days a week. That's it. It's easy. It's based on technology that was found uh, testing fighter pilots. So it really is an amazing device. Zonaplus.com. At checkout, type in my name, Rusty. And guess what? You'll get $50 off. Zonaplus. It's right here. I use it daily. And my doctor's like, whoa, your blood pressure is great now. Thanks, Zonaplus. Okay. Zonaplus.com. 
<sighs> Cedric just found the show. Thank you, Cedric. We appreciate it. Joseph says Mary's very famous tonight. Yes, Mary. Deb says you don't hear the before the close-up shot. Myrna says, what about the female taxi driver? We heard shots near her and from far away from her. Um, Henry says hiding the truth keeps the population under control. You know, um, Carmen says, saw a video with a lady at the Bellagio. She said there were gunshots there the same night. Is that true? Not that I've seen or heard. Um, there's a lot of people that like attention. There's a lot of, you know, and again, when you're in the middle of something that happens and it happens with every news story, there's a report of two shooters, five, this, all kinds of stuff. And then when you actually start finally getting down to it, you realize that people mis misunderstood or they saw something. It's just, I mean, if you've never been in one of those situations, I've been in a couple and it's very easy to think something happened that didn't. And uh, we just here on the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion and a right wing news um, and also our, our good friends at uh, LibertyOneTV.com. Thank you very much for having us on tonight as well. We just want to get the truth out. And I have no narrative. I have no um, agenda. I just want the truth. Roger says, psycho drugs are always in the mix on mass shootings. True. Deb says, why reload if you have as many guns as the man had? It looked to me like he may have had the guns and thrown them. I mean, that's very possible. I saw that. Um... Somebody says very little recoil. I don't know. I I shot a machine gun one time in the desert. And, and I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. I shot I shot the machine gun. I'd never done it before. And all I know is I pulled the trigger. I was with a Navy SEAL and it was all licensed and everything. And I, I shot the gun. I'm thinking, you know, you kind of just shoot and it goes whoa, 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 wow. And I try again, and I got, you know, listen, I'm no wussy. I couldn't control the thing. And it really um, became, it, it really um, told me a lot that those automatic weapons, they're powerful. So Henry says he had a lot more than just guns. Yeah, and then he was shooting for that big gas tank, and I've seen that thing. That thing's been there for a while. Lyndon said he could have just flown an airplane into the crowd if he were suicidal. Maybe. You know, there's a lot of things you could have done. Oh, Roger says AR-15s have no recoil. Weight on the spring absorbs the shock, not like other center fire weapons. I've got an AR-15. Um... A recoil, but not like the automatic weapon. That's definitely for sure. All right. Um, I had a whole bunch of other stuff I wanted to talk about, but you know what? I think we've covered it for the night. So do me a favor, if you would, please. Make sure you share the video. Make sure right now, before we go away, that you hit like like a thousand times. Like, 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 hearts, thumbs ups, whatever. We've got to let Facebook know that you're paying attention, that you're engaged, that you're involved. Please, do it. like, 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 and get it out there. Share it out there right now. Let people know. Okay? Deb says, you tell me a 64-year-old man used two guns at once. So from what they're trying to say is he shot one window and then throw the gun away and go to the neck, go to a different window, shoot again. That's what they're saying, not me. Okay, the thetoymaker.com. If you have kids... And you want to do some fun arts and craftsy things with them and have them actually learn something and it's fun and not expensive, go to thetoymaker.com right now and see what they have. And sign up for their newsletter. They've got a lot of free stuff and stuff for Halloween and all kind and every holiday you can think of, they got art projects, arts and crafts projects. It's a lot of fun and a great way to do stuff with the kids. Let's go thetoymaker.com if you do that. Uh, WaxRx.com, clean out the ears, make it all better. ZonaPlus.com. Keyword rusty on that one. And Dermend. Dermend. Moisturizing anti-itch lotion. If you're a seasoned citizen, this stuff is amazing. Especially formulated for your itchy, 
Mature Skin, Moisturizer, Skin Conditioning Agents, and Promoxine HCI. We're leaving that itch and irritation. You can find out more at Dermen.com. Or just go to Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, any great retailer, and they're going to have it. They got lots of great, lots of great uh, products. Dermen, awesome stuff. Hey guys, we appreciate you. We really do. The podcast, The Rusty Avery's Rebellion, iTunes, Stitcher, and if you get a chance, would you please say something nice? Go to iTunes and you know subscribe. It makes a big difference in your comments. And don't forget to uh, support Laura Loomer and Mike uh, uh, Tope. Please, they're good people. They're working hard. So please go and uh, and help them out too, if you would. That's it for me. I sure appreciate you. My name is Rusty Humphreys. This is the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. May God bless you and may God bless America. See you tomorrow.